Hello everyone, uh, I'm Meredith and welcome to our webinar today, Engaging Online, Teaching and Learning with the SDG Academy. Um, as you know, you've joined us, we are the SDG Academy. Um, who's on the call with us today? We have Florencia Libritzi, the Head of Partnerships, Shannon Cobrin, who is an Education Manager, and myself. Today, we are coming to you at this time from our homes, like many of you. Just because our classrooms have changed doesn't mean the quality and delivery of our course content needs to stress needs to suffer at all. So we'd like to start by introducing you to some of our resources, which we can we hope can support you in your syllabi, in your teaching agendas throughout the close of academic year 19 and 20, but also beyond for any additional kind of outreach opportunities, engagement opportunities, research opportunities that you might find in this content. Some housekeeping issues before we begin, um, just some points I'd like to bring your attention to. Right now there are 29 attendees active in this call. If you would like to raise your hand throughout this process, there's a hand raising button in the um, ribbon that you can press in order to raise your hand so that we can see if you have a question. But for a group of this size, if you'd like to just submit your question in the question section on that same ribbon, um, I can either answer directly to you, or if it's a question that you'd like to save for the discussion at the end, then we can broach the question across the whole group. We'll take a couple of moments in the middle for yes or no quick questions to make sure that we're covering all of the material that, that you understand and then a longer section at the end to get to the beefier sorts of questions that you might have in dealing with the content. So to begin with our agenda, yes, uh, we've had our welcome. We'd just really like to welcome you all to engaging with the SDG Academy today, and hopefully there will be some resources that you can find, some takeaways here that you can work with for the future. Next, I'll cover the learning objectives. Florencia will then give a brief introduction to the SDG Academy and to sustainable development. Then Shannon will begin an introduction to the SDG Academy resources, which will include ideas on how to use the SDG Academy resources in your teaching. From there, we'll move to a question and answer, if you could facilitate those questions through the side panel questions. And then at the close, Florencia will discuss how to get more involved with the SDGs SDG Academy. So to begin, when we discuss the learning objectives, there are a number of things that we are going to do in this webinar, which you can see here. But I'd also like to note that there are a number of things that we will not be doing in this webinar. We're not going to discuss online learning ground rules, switching to e-learning, um, the more technical things that we're sure you're getting tons of input and advice from your own university or your own learning institution. Uh, we're not going to tell you the best practice for your own classroom or your own region, et cetera. And we're not going to push an agenda for the SDG Academy or our own partnerships. This is a resources-based discussion. And what we want to do is really highlight these objectives that we have listed here. So what will be covered is the wide range of academic subjects that our, co our content covers, the types of resources available through the SDG Academy, how to search for video resources in our SDG Academy library, how to navigate our MOOCs on the edX platform, different strategies for integrating our content into your online lessons, and steps you can take to maximize your engagement and creativity with, with the resources that we've shared with you today. So again, if you have any questions, please send those directly to me in the questions ribbon. Otherwise, Florencia, if you'd like to begin with the SDG Academy overview. Absolutely. Thank you, Meredith. Um, thank you, everyone, to join us and welcome. I'm very pleased to connect with all of you and bring you closer to our work, hoping that the SDG Academy resources will be helpful, will be timely and effective for you to engage online your students and create a meaningful teaching and learning experience. Um, as many of you might know, and I see that there are different uh, groups of people in, in this um, webinar, some of you are part of SESM, some, you, some of you new to us. So I'd be happy to tell you that the SDG, um, so the Sustainable Development Solution Network, SESM, was launched in uh, year 2012 by former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. Um, so the main objective was to mobilize global scientific and technological expertise to promote practical solutions on sustainable development, including the implementation of the SDGs, as well as the Paris Climate Agreement. So to fulfill our mandate, we work very closely with UN, uh, with the private sector, with academia and social society, and civil society uh, largely. So the SDG Academy, which is the initiative in which we're working, uh, is the flagship education initiative of SESN. Uh, with the mandate of creating and curating the best available educational content on sustainable development and making sure that we um, provide it for a global public good. 
So DESIG Academy was launched in year uh, 2016 uh, with the goal of becoming the world's leading uh, creation and curation site for educational content on the SDG. And currently, the initiative has garnered over 300,000 enrollments across its platforms and uh, for over 180 countries. And it's our uh, aim that we're going to continue to reach more and more people. And we hope that this is also going to be helpful to you and you're going to circulate with, with your network. So we really want to reach millions. Um, so, um, and, and we believe that that's the way that we are empowering this generation and the next to achieve sustainable development. So as you know, sustainable development has been defined in many, many ways, uh, but most frequently, um, a quoted definition is, it comes from, the, from our common future, uh, or as well as now Brundtland, uh, sorry, Brundtland report. So, um, and it defines sustainable development as a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Um, and in that sense, um, we, we, you might remember that until uh, 2015, we had the Millennium Development Goals, and as they were expiring, in September 2015, uh, the Sustainable Development Goals were launched at the UN, um, adopted by 193 member states. And um, the SDGs are very important because they provide a shared global blueprint for peace, for, for prosperity, for people and for the planet. And these 17 goals are um, extremely interconnected and interdisciplinary, and they constitute an urgent call for action uh, to global partnership, as we've seen uh, SDG 17. Um, to really tackle the biggest and the most uh, challenging uh, issues of our time, ranging from poverty to inequality, climate change, and many, many others. Um, so uh, these are some of the subjects that the SHG cover, and just like the SHG cover these uh, items, uh, we ensure that our uh, repertoire of over 30 MOOCs also um, uh, cover them. So. Um, it is really my hope and, and of my team uh, that uh, diligently put this webinar together, that uh, this webinar will help you at this difficult time with uh, COVID-19, with the pandemic outbreak, outbreak um, to create an, uh, this engaging online learning experience that we need. And it's my personal hope that as we will face this crisis together uh, in partnership uh, with a renewed commitment to the SDGs, um, and that by accelerating sustainable development solutions, including online education, uh, we will ensure that the decade of action is really uh, one that will lead us to achieve the SDGs. So without further ado, I pass it over to uh, my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Florencia. Uh, I see there's one person that says they're having problems with their sound. So perhaps if you'd like to exit the meeting and then re-enter, or if you'd like to just pause for a second and then try to refresh. Um, one other thing to highlight as we're moving forward with this resources discussion, again, thank you, Florencia, for the context, is that there's a handouts section in the command ribbon. In the handouts section, you'll be able to access the document that lists all of the all of the SDG Academy MOOCs and all of the lessons within each syllabus. So this is the, the overview document that you could see there that we had circulated in advance of the call, but that's just something to note as an additional resource. But Shannon, would you like to go ahead with, with the rest of the content? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Shannon Coburn. I'm another education manager here with the Academy, uh, and I want to give you a brief overview of some of the resources that we'd like to share with you today. Um, in particular, we have our SDG Academy library, and then our MOOCs that Florencia mentioned earlier. This is, if you're not familiar with the term MOOC, it's an acronym for Massive Open Online Course, and um, that basically is just a uh, completely online, publicly available educational experience um, that is open to anyone, so can have thousands of people enrolled in it at a single time. Um, we have produced nearly 30 MOOCs now on subjects related to the SDGs and the sustainable development field uh, in collaboration with experts in, in these fields um, through our, our networks and through um, our connections to organizations like the United Nations and the World Bank uh, and other universities. Um, and we host our MOOCs on a platform called edX, which is one of the world's largest online learning platforms with about 24 million registered users. Um, so our, our MOOCs are primarily made up of video lectures featuring these experts in our network. Um, and then we, what we've done is taken all of the videos from our MOOCs and put them into our SDG Academy library, which is like a private YouTube for the SDGs. It's all of the videos 
uh, available in this searchable format. So I can give you a quick, uh, this is the URL for it. It's also available in that handout that Meredith mentioned. Um, so no need to copy it down right now if, if you don't have the time. I should also note that everyone should be getting a recording of this webinar um, after we finish. So if there's anything that you have um, missed or want to take another look at later, um, you should be receiving a copy of, of a video of this recording uh, or of this webinar. Um, but let me give you a little preview here, or a little, a little quick look uh, at our SDG Academy library. This is what it looks like. Um, so you can see all of the um, categories that we have our videos organized by. You can, uh, if you want to look for videos in a particular course, um, and you can find more details on the different courses that we offer in that handout that Meredith mentioned. Um, if you want to look by course, you can look here. This is a list of all of our courses organized alphabetically, and then you can find the videos associated with those courses there. Uh, you can also search by lecture. We have um, several hundred uh, experts and different academics and practitioners from across the world uh, who have participated in our courses. Um, if you do like using the SDG framework as a way to teach or think about your content, you can um, look for content based on, on which SDG that it's related to. And obviously, because it's an interdisciplinary subject, many of our videos are linked to more than one SDG. Um, and then what might be most useful for many of you as, as educators, um, particularly in a, in a university context, is we have here um, uh, content organized by academic subject. Um, so it's not it's not comprehensive. It's missing a couple of things right now um, that we hope to add in a minute. But um, this is also a good way to find content that is relevant to courses that you might be teaching. Um, so this homepage here, um, we have a couple featured playlists that we think is content that we want to highlight or is particularly relevant at the moment, like courses from our global public health course, uh, videos from our global public health course, um, and then trailers for all of the full length MOOCs that you can find on edX. So um, a little bit more about what these videos look like when you find one that you'd like to see. So you go in here, I've, I've looked for a, a video from one of our MOOCs. Um, so this is what it looks like. And every, every one of the lecture videos, we have a couple of different types of videos on here. The majority of them are, are fully produced lecture videos from our courses. Um, and every one of those should have at minimum an English language transcript. The transcripts are available for download. You can do that right here, uh, or you can print it directly. Um, and you can get different closed captions or, or subtitles. Many of our videos have transcripts or, or subtitles in additional languages as well. And you can find that by clicking this button here and seeing what languages are available. Um, so the transcripts are downloadable. The videos themselves are also downloadable. And we think that is important for people who might be teaching in contexts where there's not reliable access to internet, or maybe your students don't have reliable access to internet. So when they can access internet, they can download the videos and then view them offline um, if, if that's something that they need. So you can do that by clicking this little button here. Um, you can also share a link to this page um, or embed the the video in an existing platform. So if you're working with a learning management system like uh, Canvas or Moodle or Blackboard, um, these might be useful links for you as well. So here's a direct link to the media page. And uh, this is still having trouble loading, but you should see an embed code here if you want to put it in, a, in an existing platform. Um, I said earlier that the majority of our videos here are, are our fully produced lecture videos. We also have uh, some things like these on the side here, which are Q and A's. Um, we've run a, a variety of live sort of Q and A sessions with different faculty from our courses where they've answered student questions through the, the public MOOC environment. Um, and we have recordings of, of some of those and those uh, do not have transcripts. So I just wanna be transparent about that. Another thing to note with our transcripts that again, we wanna be transparent is that we um, are a small nonprofit. And because of that, the majority of our transcripts and our translations of our transcripts um, have been produced with volunteers. We don't, um, unfortunately don't have the capacity to do that in house. And we also don't have the capacity to do a lot of quality control. Um, so 
please use as much of it as you can. Um, but if you find errors or, or something you think is, is not properly translated, um, do let us know because we want to make that as available as, as possible and as accurate as we can. Um, but just something to keep in mind in terms of uh, how much we can guarantee anything's accuracy because we are working primarily with volunteers. Um, another thing to note about the content here, both the content uh, of the videos themselves and um, of everything in the full length MOOCs, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute, um, is that this content was designed for to be pitched at, we say, about a, an introductory master's level. Um, and so that's the, our content is, is available to a really wide audience. We have students who um, are currently enrolled in university or, or graduate programs. Um, we have lifelong academics, uh, practitioners, government officials, lifelong learners of every sort, people who are just members of the public who want to be better educated on these subjects. Um, but we are primarily working with adult learners of various sorts. Um, if you are teaching uh, a younger group of students, I think you know your students best. Take a look at our content and decide whether you think that they can handle it, how you want to structure a lesson around it. Maybe if you are working with younger students, um, high school students or, or early university students, maybe use that as, as a way to really delve deep into a subject and watch the video and then you know, craft a whole conversation around it. But I also want to make sure that we're all aware of, of sort of um, who these videos were designed for. And then you can use your best judgment on whether or not they're appropriate for your students. Um, you can also use them to educate yourself uh, if, if there's a subject you'd like to know more about so that you can then teach it to a younger group of students. Um, so that is a brief preview of everything we have in the library. I also want to show everyone uh, a little bit more about the MOOCs themselves. Um, so you can access our MOOCs on edX.org. Like I said, that's one of the world's largest online learning platforms. Um, switch back to our demo. Oh, sorry, my computer froze just a bit. Um, so this is our page on edX. Everyone on edX is a University X partner. That's how they brand their partners. So edX has partnerships with universities and, and global institutions uh, around the world, and they're all putting on very different types of content. And as Florencia said, our content is geared around the SDGs and, and the field of sustainable development. Um, so if you would like to find us, we're at SDG Academy X. You can look for us here in the search bar. Um, and this is just a page of all of the courses that are currently available. Um, so I'm going to show you the inside of one of our courses here It's called Tech for Good. That's our course on technology and international development, um, which deals with the way that technology is being used in different fields of development, like delivering healthcare, education, um, what kind of infrastructure is needed to make sure that everyone has access to all of these new technologies. And then also what are some of the pitfalls or, or challenges of using these technologies um, to, to create a better world. Um, so that's what this course deals with. It was created uh, with our partners at UNESCO. Um, so you can see here, the, our courses are divided into what we call modules, which if you were teaching this as a semester long course, think of a module as a week's worth of content. Um, in every one of our courses is organized slightly differently because they were all produced with different partners or at different times. Um, but for the most part, a module of content is going to include the video chapters. We call our lectures chapters. Um, and each video is roughly 10 minutes of, of content. Um, so that is our, our expert speaking on screen. There's also uh, B-roll footage that helps sort of give context or illustrate what they're talking about. Um, there may be graphs or charts in the video as well, um, or relevant uh, websites or materials that, that uh, the lecturer wants to showcase. And those are all included in the videos. Um, most of our courses also include readings, um, either required readings or just a big list of additional resources that are, that are there to help contextualize and, and have supplement, supplementary material to the videos. Um, Many of our courses also include a, an interactive activity, um, which I can show you in a minute, and then also um, discussion prompts to help the global cohort of students engage around these issues and, and connect with each other in, in this MOOC environment. 
Um, I'll also note that um, the video chapters often have comprehension questions, um, usually multiple choice or true false to help students gauge their own understanding of the content. And every course includes at least a final exam also based around multiple choice or true false questions. Um, our, our intention with these, because they are publicly available courses, they're there for people to, to elevate their own learning. Um, these are not, the, the assessments are not as rigorous as you may have in a formal classroom. Um, so please feel free to take a look, borrow what you would like, um, but just know that they were not designed to be in a formal uh, learning environment. Um, so let's dive into what one of these modules looks like here. So when you go in, this is uh, a video chapter from, from our Tech for Good course. Uh, this is the module on measurement um, and using data to, to measure different uh, changes in technology around the world. Um, so you can see, just like in the library, there are transcripts in various languages, which you can access here. Just like in the library, the video files and the transcript files are downloadable. So anything that people need to view offline, they can find here. This course has the comprehension questions underneath each video. Some other courses have them all gathered together, kind of like a quiz at the end of the week, but um, every course will have some form of, of comprehension questions. Um, so the videos really are the, the core part of every module's worth of activities. But like I said, there's also readings, there are links to relevant websites um, and activities. Not every course features these type of activities, but I wanted to give you a, a preview because I think that they could be useful for you when you're designing your own online learning experiences. So again, this is the module on data and one of the lectures talks about the importance of communicating data um, and using, using data visualization to help people really understand and make use of all the data that's out there because if people can't understand what they're looking at, then it's never gonna make a difference. So what we've done here is linked out to a website called Gapminder. This is not something we created. This is a, a, a freely available resource online. Um, that is a data visualization tool. And for this one in particular, we were able to embed it straight in the course. Um, some other things are just linked, but we encourage students to go to them and explore the resource. Um, and then we have a, a prompt or, or some steps that the students can take to explore this resource, understand how it works. Um, and then there is um, a, a discussion prompt so students can reflect on their experience. And the intention behind this is so that students can play around with this cool tool that is available online, understand why it's useful, and then really think about what that lecturer said in that video about why it's important to visualize data and make it usable for the average person. Um, so I'm gonna stop there and um, go back to our, our slides here. And I wanna talk a little bit now about, now that we have all of these resources, you can get a sense of what we have available for you for your teaching. Um, what can you do with them in an online environment, particularly if you're not used to teaching online? So everyone's context is going to be a little bit different. Your resources, your tools that are available to you are gonna be a little bit different depending on, on your university or what, what programs your university subscribes to. Um, so we just had a couple of ideas here to get you started and then you, know, you can build off of that in a way that works best for you and your students. Um, I think the simplest way to start is just to have your students watch a video, go into the library, explore um, videos that you think might be relevant to your content, uh, the content that you're teaching. And then if you're using something like a learning management system, something like Moodle or Blackboard, maybe um, put the video in there and assign it to your students, kind of like a pre-course reading, um, and then use that to spur some sort of discussion. So you can, you can have a discussion um, in a message board if you have sort of an asynchronous uh, lesson going on, um, or if you have a small classroom and you're doing um, video conferencing or, or phone-based conferencing, you can use the, the video to spur an actual in-person or almost in-person discussion. Um, you can also look to use the videos to introduce sort of a general topic that is relevant to whatever you're intending to teach that week. Um, and then respond you in your lesson that you prepare respond to the video so have your students watch it so they're all on the same page and then maybe delve deeper into something that's covered in the video but not covered as deeply as you'd like 
or you can use it to spur a debate, or you can um, use it to present alternative perspectives to the one that the lecturer has has presented. Because obviously, like any other teacher, our, our lecturers are coming with their own expertise and their own perspectives uh, based on whether they're an academic or whether they work for a particular NGO or, or organization. Um, when it comes to using the, the MOOCs themselves on edX, um, we certainly recommend that you enroll yourself in whatever course you think is relevant to your teaching. Um, and by doing that, you can explore everything that I just showed you in an edX course. You can take a look to see if there are any quiz questions you'd like to borrow. Unfortunately, you can't download those uh, from edX, but you can copy and paste the content um, into a, a format that works for you. Um, you can take a look and see if the course includes interactive activities like the one that I showed you with the Gapminder website in, a, in our course. Um, and you can borrow those, link out to any of the resources that you find. You can download any of the readings that you find in our courses um, and share those with your students. Um, you can see what discussion prompts that we have available and you can borrow those to put in your own message boards on your own platforms. Um, so you can just dig around in the courses as, as we have them to see if there's anything that you'd like to use in your own course. Um, and then finally, one option that, that may work for some of you is you can have your students enroll directly in one of our courses. Um, they can, and you can tell them to you know, complete the whole thing if that's something that works for you. You can ask them to just complete certain modules based on, um, based on what is relevant to your lesson. Um, the vast majority of the courses you're gonna find on, on our edX page are what's called self-paced which means that they are open and available right now until the majority of them close in September. And then they will be reopening again and they'll be available for a full year. So there's no timeline. There's, there's no uh, sense that the course is gonna close anytime soon. Um, so you can enroll students in them and then they can follow along at their own pace or whatever pace you set for them um, so that they can view all of the content, the videos, the readings, uh, and participate in this global discussion that's going on on the message boards with students from around the world. Um, so I think now is a good chance to stop, take a breath, uh, and give you all a chance to, to ask any questions that you have. We're happy to go over anything that we've discussed. Um, if there's anything we can clarify for you, that would be, uh, this would be a great time to do that as well. Uh, Meredith, do you wanna help us answer some questions? Absolutely. And we've had a few come through as you've been talking, Shannon, so I'll go through those now. But since this does seem to be a bit of a smaller group, if you would like to raise your hand using that feature, we can also call on you for a specific question there. So one question that came up rather early in the conversation was from Joan, asking about signing in to use the video resources and things like that. Can you just clarify specifically what would require a login, Shannon, and what's just available through the library platform and through the edX platform explicitly? Um, so for the library, if you want to view, share, or download any of those videos, you should be able to do that without logging in. The login feature is something that we use for a particular partnership program, which I'm sure Florencia will discuss uh, in a minute. Um, but if you're just interested in looking for some resources and, and want to explore, you do not need to log in to do that. You should be able to access everything on the library um, without logging in. For edX, that is, uh, edX is its own company and its own platform, and they do require you to register if you want to enroll in any of the courses, um, but it's it's free. I should also mention when you enroll in the course, you'll see two options. One's called the audit track, and one is called the verified certificate track. Um, edX uh, does not give free certificates. If you, if you complete its courses, they do something called a verified certificate, and they do charge a fee for that. So if you just want your students to experience the course, um, tell them to enroll on the audit track, uh, and that is that is free. Um, if you or or any of your colleagues or students are interested in pursuing a certificate, then by all means uh, enroll in the verified certificate track. Um, and if if the cost of the if the fee is a concern, edX offers its own uh, financial aid. So that's something you can look into as well if that if that's uh, of use to you. Mm -hmm. And there, there's one question that came through just shortly here about, you did say early level masters, correct? We did. Um, like I said, that is sort of what we advertise it as that's um, a, going through a broad overview of these kind of complex global issues and, and global topics. Um, but I think 
like I said earlier, you know your students best. Um, I think this the content is reasonable for undergraduate students um, and maybe if you're teaching an AP or an advanced high school students and you really want to spend a whole lesson dissecting what this person said in this video and going really deep into some of these um, these topics. I, I think that it's really up to you how you want to use them and how you want to present them to your students. Um, but I encourage you to go take a look, watch some of the videos and, and uh, especially anything that is considered an introductory video might be a good place to start if you are teaching younger students. And really, um, as you take the resources for yourself and make them into your localized context, you can change them to have discussion questions or reflection questions or assessment questions that are reflective of your, your culture, your regional geography, your students' age range, things like that, depending on how detailed you'd like to get. So there, there are a number of ways that these can be translated. Um, another question that just came through, and Shannon, I think you'll be well versed in this, is from Joshua, who says, Aloha. He is a teacher on global issues courses. Is there one course that covers each of the 17 global goals and offers the best readings on every different goal? Aloha. Uh, yes, excellent question. So if you are interested in teaching about the, the sustainable development agenda and the SDGs specifically, um, obviously each of our courses is tied to an SDG. That's what we're here for, and that's that's the subject that we cover. Um, but if you're interested in sort of just what are the SDGs and what, what subjects and what issues do they cover, we have a couple different courses. Um, our flagship course is uh, the very first course we ever created. It's called the Age of Sustainable Development, led by um, Columbia professor and, and very renowned economist Jeffrey Sachs. Uh, he's actually the director of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, our parent organization. And he is, is featured or leads a many of our courses. So his his first course with us and our, our first course ever was this very comprehensive course called uh, Age of Sustainable Development. And that's available on edX as a course. And then all of the videos are available in the library. We also have a newer course called How to Achieve the SDGs. That's also by Jeffrey Sachs. Um, and that is more action focused. It's okay, now that you know a little bit more about what the SDGs are what needs to be done to achieve them in different sectors of society? What role does government play? What role does civil society play? What can the private sector do? Um, what can individuals do? So that that's a more action-oriented course rather than a, a sort of general overview. And then if you don't want to take a full length, you know, eight to 14 week course, um, we have something called Transforming Our World and that is what we call a mini course. It's only five videos. Not, not five months, just like five videos. It also has uh, readings and quiz questions, but that's a, a really quick way to get a, a snapshot of what are the SDGs and why are they important. Um, so those are the three I would recommend if you're, if you're interested in just a big overview of what the SDGs actually are. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a few more questions about access coming in, Shannon. So the first, if a faculty wants to use just one small video on the course, it's possible, right? You can just take that video away from the library. Yeah, that would be my recommendation um, is to if if there's a video and like I said, you can go into that handout that is uh, attached to your control panel here um, and get a sense of what <coughs> excuse me, what topics are are covered in each course, what are the titles of each of the chapters within a course. Um, and then you can find that video in in the library. That's the easiest place, I think, to find individual videos. Um, if you are in an edX course, if you're if you're playing around in the edX platform, um, each video is available for download from that platform as well. So if you're looking through it and you say, oh, this is really interesting, you can press download video and just get it straight from there. Excellent. One more question coming through about um, MOOCs and the, the, the platform itself. How many learners are allowed to register on each MOOC? Is there a limit? That's a good question. I think our most popular MOOC at the moment um, is a course on atmospheric and climate science with Michael Mann. He's a, a expert climatologist from Penn State. Um, that course currently has over 13,000 people enrolled in it. Um, but that, I mean, I think some MOOCs on edX or Coursera or other leading uh, online learning platforms have had you know, hundreds of thousands of people at a time, um, because it's a because it's a, an open platform for for the general public. People enroll and then maybe never actually take the course, or they enroll but they don't participate in the discussion boards, or they're all sort of taking it at different times. Um, so it's it's a little less structured than than a classroom like you would uh, do. But um, if you do have your students 
enroll in the course, then you can sort of set deadlines for them uh, and, and sort of uh, control their engagement in a, a little bit more of a controlled way. Um, but yeah, I don't think that there's a limit as far as I know. And Shannon, can you say just a couple of words again about the languages which are available? Sure. So every one of those key lecture videos, anything that we consider a chapter, will have at least an English language transcript. So if um, if someone's speaking, you know, we, we have faculty from all over the world, so someone's accent may be difficult to uh, to understand, or if your students are not native English speakers themselves, but they do understand English, they may want to have the English subtitles there or to read the transcript rather than watch the video. Um, there are a number of other um, languages available, but not every video has all the languages. So I would recommend going to the library, clicking that, that little closed caption button, and you can see whatever languages are available there. Um, I know we have a number of videos that have Spanish. Uh, a couple of them have Portuguese. I've seen French. A couple of them have uh, Mandarin. Um, it really depends on the volunteers in our network and who who's available to translate. I think a number of them have Russian as well, if that's interesting to you. One question here, and this might be something that Florencia wants to jump on, on as well. Carol asks, how is new material or different topics commissioned? Hello, Carol. That's a great question as well. Um, so I would say that uh, the majority of the uh, MOOCs came together with a large um, and generous uh, grant that we had from Chia Foundation time ago. Um, and these uh, were mostly commissioned to different um, leading experts around the world that put together um, an advisory group uh, to identify faculty. And, and we partnered with different organizations to ensure that, that we got different voices. So. For instance, I can uh, give you an example of one MOOC that we're about to launch in a couple of uh, weeks, I hope, um, on uh, decent work. So we partnered with the ILO and with uh, different leading experts around the world uh, to ensure that we have uh, diverse voices, um, whether it's from a uh, different perspective, because these are academic MOOCs, uh, to also diversity in terms of, as much as possible, uh, diversity in terms of regions of the world and um, gender, etc. Um, so that's uh, how it works, um, at least for the majority of our MOOCs. Uh, later on, um, we've been also starting to um, explore the opportunities of curating MOOCs that others um, have done and that they uh, can add value to, to our library, uh, our repertoire, but also partnering with some specific um, entities and seeking funding, uh, funding together to, to develop them. Uh, Shannon and Meredith, if you. If I'm missing something, please come in. And do you have anything to add? Um, no, just that I think Florencia covered it, that we work with different partners and different organizations to create content that we think is relevant to the discussion and, and also relevant to their expertise. Um, so that, that's, that's sort of where, where the topics come from, uh, if, if you're interested in sort of why do we have the courses that we have. Yeah. Maybe one more thing to add, and I know that there has been a lot of appetite uh, for a business course uh, that we don't have yet. Of course, actually, yesterday, as we were running the other webinar uh, like last night, uh, someone asked a question about business, and we put, put uh, Shannon put business in the library, and many, many videos appear because it's obviously it's embedded in our other um, online courses. Uh, but something that we would like to do and, and we look forward is perhaps to um, put together a MOOC uh, on um, on business uh, and on the SDGs, and particularly also how to teach at business schools. So something to try out there because I know that there is some um, perhaps business uh, school professor uh, in the call. Yeah, if I can jump on there, Florencia, uh, that reminds me. I did forget to mention one thing about the library that that's relevant to that. So I showed you um, all of the different categories that our courses are are you know tagged by or connected to. Um, Business is one that we want to add because we we do have content relevant to business management, the corporate you know corporate um, philanthropy and and business ethics, uh, and um, and the private sector in general and what their role is in this world. Um, it's not under our subject list, but we will add it soon. Um, but anything that you want to look for that's not available under any of these categories, you can just search by keyword. So. Um, 
if you want to find something relevant to a particular region or particular country if there's a subject that isn't listed here like business so i can just do that right now and show you um, you can search there and it'll search through a couple of different things so it searches the title of the video it searches through the transcript to see if that keyword is mentioned um, and then in addition to being categorized, all of our videos are tagged with, with relevant tags of, of things that are important about that video. So the search function also reviews the tag. So if, you're, if you want a video about um, something happening in East Africa, you could search for East Africa and it'll find you any videos that we have that um, are case studies on different things in the region or mention anything in the region. So you have to go through and, and see what's relevant to you because it is searching through kind of every part of the video, um, but that's a good way to find a subject that is not yet included in, in this list up here. Wonderful. Um, another couple of questions coming through just now. Does the edX platform comply with European data privacy rules, which could be relevant for European students? I can say from personal experience, yes, it definitely does. Um, we've had lectures in the past that have even tried to reach out to students in, in more innovative ways. And the platform does take all of these privacy considerations into their, their own policies. So while your students would register with a username and then they would receive um, kind of course updates through the edX platform, either via email if they signed up for it that way or through course course updates and course announcements, uh, they are fully uh, compliant with European data laws. Do you have anything to add on that, Shannon? No, I think you covered it. Um, it's something that they paid a lot of attention to when, when that was uh, being discussed and when the laws went into effect. Um, so your, your students should only receive emails relevant to the course. And if they start receiving, um, and, and perhaps marketing emails about courses that are relevant to their interests based on what they have signed up for already. And I believe that you can uh, unsubscribe from those types of emails uh, in your user profile. Another question that just came through, every video, every part of, is every video part of only one MOOC or is there some overlap? So I, from, from from what I've seen, I believe that every video is is associated with a singular MOOC. There's not videos that are used again and again and again. However, there might be some themes that are similar. So if there's something that you wanted to cover, like when you looked up business and you could see all of the many different ways that business has been knitted throughout this fabric, um, you can certainly use videos in a number of innovative ways, but there wouldn't be a video that's used in lessons seven, eight, and nine, or in MOOCs three, four, and five. Shannon, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, agreed. Um... Many of our videos are very similar, particular if, particularly if the courses have similar themes. So like I mentioned earlier, we have uh, three courses that were developed uh, with, with Professor Jeffrey Sachs around the theme of sort of what are the sustainable development goals? How can they be achieved? Um, so you may find multiple videos that are called something like an introduction to the SDGs or, um, you know, exploring SDG 12 or, or something, if, if that's relevant to those discussions, and they were filmed at different times um, for the particular MOOC that they're a part of, but they may, um, they, they may be uh, a lot of, there may be a lot of overlap in the content. Um, so that might just be a personal preference, which one do you prefer listening to? Um, which one do you prefer looking at? Um, so there, there is a, a repetition of content there. We have, at the top of my head, I think we have one course that was developed with some of our partners in the Mediterranean region that has a variety of, it has its own videos and then it also does uh, include some videos. The, the, the course is on food and agriculture specifically in the Mediterranean region um, and how that relates to sustainability in the region. Um, and so there are, they, we work with them to, to create their own videos on, on regional issues. And then I think they also borrow a couple videos from our course on uh, feeding a hungry planet which is our global course on food and agriculture um, as well as our course one planet one ocean which is about oceans and ocean physics and ocean sustainability um, so that's that's sort of an anomaly um, but that particular course does have a couple of videos that have, have been uh, borrowed from other courses but it also has its own videos that are specific to that course mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is one more question. Chen, could you pull up the attachment, the handout that's attached here? Do you still have Absolutely. that? Absolutely, I do, just a minute. So there's one question here that asks if we could tell the route to find the courses, that they would love to check them out for themselves and propose to teachers from Gina. So I'd say that 
the starting point for this discussion, especially if you're going to be sharing with others in your network, would be to pull up this handout and to look through it. As you scroll down, you'll be able to see each and every course listed out alphabetically. Uh, these courses then have the faculty members listed on the left-hand side if there's a particular leader that you're interested in learning from. They also have the full syllabi. So you can go on a week-by-week, module-by-module basis and see thematically what you're interested in, but then you can also mine down into each of the subjects that are available here. So perhaps you, you want to teach about sustainable development, but you're not sure if you want to teach about financing, if you want to teach about generally achieving, if you want to teach about leadership, you can go into several of the thematic modules and find the exact video that would suit your learners. Additionally, because it's a PDF, it's so easy to share and to use searchable content uh, keywords to find your own, your own resources there. Once you've found these courses that might be most relevant to yourself, either going into the library and mining out those videos in particular, now that you know what course they're associated with, their title, their lecture, etc., that would be one way to go, or to enroll in the edX platform and find the full learning pathway there so that you can see any sorts of discussion questions that are going on. Shannon, do you have anything to add? Yeah, just that in this document here, there are a couple of things that are hyperlinked that if you uh, want an easy way to get to just click on something and get to some of these resources that we've talked about. Um, on this first page here, um, we're, no, it's not the first page. Uh, on our second page here, where we talk about content and resources, this link here to edX.org, where we describe the MOOCs as we describe them to you, that should take you straight to our page on edX. Um, and similarly, this paragraph here, um, if you need to access the library, this is already linked and you can just click that. Um, additionally, each of the, the detailed look at each of the courses. So we have this page here, which is just a list of the titles of all of the courses that we have available. Um, but then if you go look at the details, each title should be linked directly to the MOOC on edX. So that's, that's a really quick and easy way for you to just get from one place to the next uh, just by using this one PDF. Perfect. I don't think there's any more questions. I've seen a few hands go up and down over the course. So if there are any hands that need to be raised, maybe do so in the next five seconds. Otherwise, we'll hand over to you, Florencia. Perfect. Oh, one more hand did to come up. Just one second. Um, Shannon, do you have the power to unmute? It's Salomon. Um, yes, just a minute. Who, who am I looking for? S-A-L-O-M-O-N. Um. Yes, let me unmute you here. Hi there, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, we can hear you too, great. Okay, uh, my name is Solomon from uh, Great Lakes, uh, uh, but I'm also based at the University of Rwanda. Um, I just want to ask a question about um, uh, if, if STSN, uh, uh, if SDG Academy can provide support to individual universities like ours, we really uh, wish to uh, start um, and encouraging our students to enroll to this uh, mock and also to take, uh, you know, use of these available courses, but uh, I think because uh, we have not yet started using these online courses, so I would like to know if STG Academy can provide a particular support to our university to be able to offer these courses to, to our students, not necessarily by uh, asking our students to directly enroll to these courses through uh, STG Academy, but rather uh, for, I mean, to, to make them available probably on our own uh, website, uh, because they, they would like to probably interact uh, through themselves, and also we also want to monitor them, whether they are really taking these courses. That's uh, question number one. Number two, which is related to this, is about certification. Uh, if like we have like a hundred or two thousand students, because our university has about uh, 20, uh, 26, uh, uh, 26, 000 students, so 
probably can take like one course, let's say introduction to sustainable development, all of them, they're supposed to take it. If we do that and uh, we want to give them a certificate as a university, is there any problem uh, with regard to this arrangement? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to put you back on mute, but thank you for, for your, uh, your questions. Um, well, I think uh, I can I can answer the second one first because Florencia is going to talk a little bit more about some of the ways that we connect with universities and partner with them to do just what you asked for to help them um, uh, connect more with our, our content. So I'll answer your second question first. Um, that it's like we the SDG Academy ourselves we're not an accredited institution, um, so we cannot offer any certification. Um, like I explained earlier, uh, edX does offer what it calls verified certificates, and and there is a, a fee associated with that. And if if that's an issue for anyone that they have a financial aid program, um, so that's if you want to take the course on edX on your own and and do it to receive a certificate, you you click the verified track, you pay the fee, and if you pass the course, you get the um, you get the certificate. In terms of offering certification or or um, academic credit through your own institution. That is something that our the partners that we've worked at uh, some some of our, the partner universities that we've worked with have done that. But that's something that they usually have to discuss and work out with their own administration because every university or every um, you know ministry of higher education uh, has different criteria for what they're allowed to give credit for. Um, so. That's that's why we have uh, this partnership program that Florentia is going to describe in a minute, so that we can help come up with different ideas for using our content in a way that they can then uh, offer credit for. Um, the big thing is, uh, I'd say, um, like I said earlier, our con our content or our assessments are not really geared towards uh, a credit bearing course. They're they're really there for public education. Um, so if you did want to find a way to offer our courses for credit at your institute at your institution i would recommend um, having supplementary assessments so take the course and then write an essay based on um, what you've learned in the course something like that because i think the the assessments that we have in our course are probably not sufficient to get credit at your institution um, but i think this is a great way to segue into uh, florencia to talk a little bit more about how you can get involved with us if you, if any of this has sounded interesting to you um, how you can learn more about us and our work and uh, other ways to get involved with the academy thank you shannon so much thank you meredith and everyone for your questions so i really hope that the webinar has been enriching to you and uh, that you will become more involved with s c academy and SESN. Uh, generally. So a couple of ideas uh, and I'm happy to also take more questions by email and my colleagues as well. So as a first step I would suggest if you can follow us on social media you will learn many more uh, opportunities um, whether webinars, whether new courses uh, that we're launching, uh, events, online events mostly now etc. So please you know you have there our Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram etc. Visit our website uh, you will you can learn more about us then there. Um, you can subscribe to our mailing list and you receive our monthly newsletter. Um, by subscribe to subscribe, you have to go to our uh, website and on the bottom at the right side, you will find like a, a button to subscribe. Um, you can also think if you are not part of SESN yet, uh, whether you can advocate in your own university to join and you will learn more about the many other opportunities in the wider SESN, whether it's um, through the networks, um, we have over 1,100 members, and each of the networks have many interesting projects and activities that you can connect. Uh, we have our mobilized our platform where people get together and learn, have their peer learning, and uh, again, many opportunities for you. Uh, we have SESN Youth um, that is advocating and bringing together uh, youth to um, bring uh, innovative solutions to the to the SHEs. So there's also an interesting group with. Uh, many volunteers and with a global uh, school program um, and also in research and policy so there is a wide of uh, different ways in which you can uh, engage with SESN and we'll be happy to elaborate more at another opportunity uh, obviously this um, uh, webinar has been focused uh, on the SHE Academy 
uh, but uh, we are a very um, a vibrant community and we would love that you're part of it. Uh, finally, and um, on this community particularly, well, uh, I wanted to mention, as Shannon said, um, over the last four years, we run different cohorts of uh, what we call the University Partnership Program, um, which is basically, uh, we've been working with universities, academic institutions, and education programs to integrate the SAT Academy course material into whether it was new or existing programs um, around the world. So the institutions that um, became UPP, or our University Partnership um, uh, partners uh, have uh, received privileged access to our content and materials um, to ensure that you know uh, that they, and, and also the advice to ensure that they could uh, run the programs um, and 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 utilize blended, blended, uh, sorry blended learning um, to deliver that experience in the classroom. So um, by doing that, they receive uh, one-on-one -on -one consultation with our educational managers. We also provided them with uh, guidelines. Um, etc. So this is one of the opportunities that you have to engage with us. What I would like to um, mention is that we're in the process of revamping this uh, program to create a community of practice. So what we mean is that over the years we've seen the um, benefit of, of our partners by, by engaging with us and having that experience, but we believe that there's much more um, learning that can happen if we have a, a real community in which there's real peer uh, sharing and learning. Um, so basically, the, the thought behind this is we have valuable content, right, that you can engage, uh, but also you can create. So we're thinking of how we can curate, curate these materials, how you can share materials with others, and ensure that um, that we all get benefit from dissemination of resources. Um, we want to create a community that is uh, is community driven, so the opportunity to collaborate and create um, can come with leading experts across the network. And um, you will also receive this customized platform. So the library that, that Shannon was showing, and as um, I believe Joanne asked, uh, there is a logging um, a, a feature to it. So basically people can um, get, get in, uh, create your own videos, create your own uh, playlist, uh, et cetera. And we're also looking at this community of practice, uh, having the opportunity to have a, a role that is more uh, a leader in, in this space. Um, and then we can all create uh, resources together, like secondary uh, resources, for instance, and, and we can support each other. So this is a very quick introduction of something that we're planning to launch in the next weeks. So you will receive more information. Um, so I just finally want to say, like, I'd like to thank my team, Meredith and Shannon, for uh, putting this webinar together. And then especially thank all of you uh, for joining us and for your important uh, work on sustainable development. So we remain at your disposal. Please write to us, let us know how your experience um, went and anything, any other way that we can support you. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you all for joining us today. Um, we've really appreciated it, especially the positive comments that have come through our questions today. Um, if you do have any questions, like, like Florencia, like Shannon have both said, please do feel free to contact us, follow us on social media. The opportunities that we've listed here for future engagement, there's something to note. We really believe in these resources and we, we love the projects. We've worked on them from, from start to finish and we've seen how they can be implemented. And we just know that there's such high quality material that is there and is available to you. So we, we do believe in these and we wanna see you succeed. So while there are so many ways that we would love to work with you in the future, what we would really like to see is for you to succeed through this digital transition. So if there are questions that we can answer or if there's any way that we can help out, please do let us know. And otherwise, we hope to see you in a webinar soon. Yeah. And uh, if you want to let us know how it's working out, you can always tweet at us or follow, uh, tell us on social media or send us an email. We'd love to hear uh, how things go with, with these resources in your classes and how your students like them. We're always looking for feedback. So thank you, everyone. Bye.